Hello my friends, Brian Benedictson here, Canadian Tour Professional and inventor of the Golfer's Toolbox. We're coming to you here from the beautiful Red Ledges Golf Club in Heber City, Utah. Great spot. And, and what we're going to do right here is we're going to run through one of the key functions of the Golfer's Toolbox, the stretching pole. Now I've got my good friend, our fitness guru, Mark Williamson, also known as the Golf Yogi. Good to see you, Mark. Good to see you, Brian. Thanks for having me. Roll. Can't tell you how excited I've been since you sent me my toolbox. This is absolutely phenomenal. Um, as you know from your playing days, and I know from mine, it, having something to stretch with every day is absolutely critical. A lot of people, you know, show up to the course 10 minutes before they're going to play and pull one of these deals. I still haven't figured out what exactly this is stretching. <laughs> they walk up, they do this. It's, you know, okay, we got to be getting stretched. We got to be getting ready to play so much more to this you can use this to stretch everything honestly from the from the calves up to your shoulders now when i was playing on tour you know i had like a training tool for stretching i had one for swing i had you know two for putting but when it came time to travel to a tournament or or go to the range to practice i couldn't take them all with me you know what i did was i combined all these products into the golfer's toolbox and put a grip on both sides so it's symmetrical in its design mm -hmm which I feel makes it like a good warm up and stretching tool. Absolutely, and I've got clients that I've put this in their hands in just the last couple of weeks since you've sent this to me. I've been taking it everywhere with me, showing clients. Um, everybody from some of my PGA Tour guys down to the beginner golfers that are really learning how to stretch are starting to figure out it's paramount. You have to be doing it. It's something that if you're not stretching before you're getting out to play, if you haven't injured yourself, it's just a matter of time until you do. So we're gonna go ahead and go through some of the stretches now. We've got Brian behind me. I'm a little bit more flexible than the average person. Brian, he's about what you're gonna see day in and day out. One thing we need to talk about before we start this, this is different than anything you've done in athletics. I'm sure we've all heard it, had it pounded into our heads. Give me 100%, give me 110%. In stretching, that's not what we're looking for. We're, we're looking for you to give 75 to 80%. You don't take it to that max and push. That's how you pull things. That's how you strain things, and that's not what we're looking for. To release, to get open, to have the muscles nice, fluid, ready to play golf, we give 75, 80% max. So let's start it out real simple. I like to call this the martini glass. So the biggest thing here is you wanna keep this martini glass. You don't wanna turn it into a wine glass. This isn't really doing anything, even though we see it at the course day in and day out. The stretch for our shoulders is coming from working the biceps and the hands and the arms back behind the ears a little bit. Soon as we get to that point, we can start to move with it a little bit. Take it off to the side. This is gonna get into the lats a little bit. It's gonna help in your rotation for your upper body. This is what you're gonna feel right around the side of the ribs. It's where a lot of our rotation is gonna be coming from in our golf swing. This isn't something where you wanna pull anything. Again, we're only going to 80% of our max here. If you get to a point where all of a sudden you couldn't be able to have a conversation, you've gone too far. We wanna keep it right here, nice and easy. Work it back and forth. Don't just get to one place and really stand and hold it. We're gonna keep moving around with it. Next thing I want to talk about is a standing down dog. So if any of you are into yoga a little bit, obviously we get onto the ground and do a lot. The nice thing about the toolbox, we can go through a whole stretching routine without having to get down on the ground, on our knees, possibly in the sand from old divots, possibly in dew in the morning. If it's raining, you definitely don't want to be on the ground. So everything we're going to do is going to be standing. So standing down dog, you're going to get the pole arms width out in front of you. Put your right hand on the top, cover it with the left. Again, we're gonna work our chest and our head down in between our arms. Then again, you can give nice little bounces here, working up and down. You're gonna feel this into the shoulders, into the upper back. It's gonna start to feel a real nice opening. It's kind of broadening through the chest a little bit once you're there. It's nice and easy. You can start to work it different ways. Take an angle into the toolbox, put it right and left. Work your hips right and left from it. Start to move around and feel what's going on in your body. Biggest thing that we do in stretching and in yoga, we balance out. So we started with the right hand down, we're gonna take the left hand down, go back through the same stretch as we were just doing there. Once you're feeling good there, we're gonna go into our next one. Nice little shoulder opener again. To start it, we're gonna take the, the toolbox right out in front of us, straight arm, not up above us, not way down, just straight out. We're going to take that right behind our shoulder here. I'll let you take a peek. Not so much into the shoulder blade, middle of the back. We want it almost where that bicep is going to meet the shoulder. Nice and easy again. Start to rotate open through the shoulder. Everything is coming from this left hand. You can see my left thumb here holding. 
That's all the pressure you need. This is a great, great stretch for the shoulder. Again, nothing more than 80%, nice and easy. Go ahead and balance it out one more time. The left hand, gonna take it around, around just to the back of the bicep, almost where it meets the shoulder. And again, nice and easy. Start to rotate this front of the toolbox up. It's gonna open the shoulder very, very nicely. From there, we're gonna start to hit the hips just a little bit. So how many people, when you hear stretching, say, I can touch my toes? We're not looking for it to go straight down and touch your toes. Here, we're gonna hinge at the hips. You got a couple of different ways to do this. We can put the toolbox right into our hip crease, start to press back through the butt a little bit, straighten out, we're keeping a straight spine in here. If that feels good, you can get down a little bit, you can get a little bit of a, kind of a release from the, what the toolbox's weight is. You can just sit, hang, let it get into the hamstrings a little bit. How you doing, buddy? I'm getting stretched out. <laughs> Beautiful. So again, what we're looking for here is a flat back as we go down into this. We're not just seeing, oh, can we get down and get our toes and rounding? Again, that's not a stretch. We're trying to get into the hamstrings. From there, we can start to use this, and this is one of the beautiful things I think about the toolbox. As, a, as, as well as being a great stretching tool, you can use this for a balance pull for any sort of stretch. Start to get into the quads a little bit. Just stand, start to pull the foot up, and it, give a little bit of a press into that hand. Pulling it up in here isn't really getting what we're wanting. It's more of a nice, easy press with the foot into the hand. If you are a yogi, you might notice this is close to a dancer pose. Trying to take it back, push through it, opening into this quad just a little bit. Again, same thing, hit the other side, using it again just as our balance pull. Nice press into the hand with the foot, opening really nicely through this quad. I promise you, it's gonna be a lot better stretch than whatever exactly this is doing for us. From there, we're gonna keep using it, using it as a balance pull. You can stick it in front, take the feet a little bit wider. I like to tell people about your driver stance. So about where you'd hit a driver from, and then open the toes just a little bit. Take the toolbox out in front of you. We're again, again gonna use it as a balancing pose. Start to work down, start to drop the butt down low. We're trying to get your butt about even with the knees or a little bit lower. And again, we're not just gonna sit here stable with this. We're gonna move around with it quite a bit. Start to get into the hips a little bit. You're gonna feel this a little bit up in your hip flexors. Great, great stretch for right here. Now, how many times a day are we gonna get down into a position like this playing golf? The answer is a lot. We're reading putts, we're teeing the ball. If you can't really feel good putting the tee in the ground here, you're gonna walk up, squat down, put it in the ground, be ready to go. Reading a putt, we're gonna be right here. This is a phenomenal stretch to start to open those muscles before we play. From there, we're gonna bring it up nice and easy. We've got a couple here for the forearms. Real simple, gonna hold the, the toolbox right out in front of you. Again, shoulder height. We're not up here, we're not down here. Real simply, we're just gonna to start to rotate through these forearms. A lot of people are wondering what exactly this is gonna do for our golf game. When you're coming through impact right here, you're gonna have a nice release with the forearms. They naturally roll over. Starting to do something simple with a little bit of a weighted stick, really gonna work into there well. Should feel really good. Again, balance it out, both sides. Nice rotation, just keep getting into these forearms. Should feel really good for you before you get out to play. From there, we've got a number of things that we can do similar to golf swings with the toolbox. My favorite, Take the toolbox directly behind your back. We're gonna stick it right about the small of our back, almost where our belt line is. Nice and easily taking just miniature swings. Nice, slow, controlled. Feel the rotation going through there. Feel your hips starting to open. And this is a great spot to kind of work on your swing a little bit. If it feels like, you know, you can really get a sense of what you're trying to do in your swing from swinging nice and slowly, that's something that really starts to go into your full game. So just keep going, nice, easy little swings, same as you'd be making. Let that right toe come up, feel that release, feel that finish position once you get up there. Again, we balance it out to the same side. So a right-handed golfer, we're then gonna swing it left-handed. I know it feels awkward when you first start trying it, trust me. Keep going with it, you're gonna balance the body out quite a bit. It's amazing how many injuries I deal with because people only work out the one side of their body or they just play golf and that's all we're getting. You're getting a lot of rotation into one side, you're firing through to the other. This is really gonna to start to help balance that out. In the same way that we were doing it behind the back just now, same thing, we're gonna grab on both ends of the grips, 
right behind the shoulders. Again, nice, easy little swings, rotating through. Feel the stretch into the hips a little bit. Feel how your body is working in this swing. This is not that different from a regular golf swing that we're making. Same thing, balance it out. Right-handers, gonna take a few swings left-handed. Lefties, gonna make a few swings right-handed. Really start to get into this, should feel really good. Again, we're gonna use this as a balance pull out in front of us. First one that we can do is gonna start to open the hips a bit. Just pulling the knee up nice and easy. Doesn't have to be super high up here, just pull it up. Take the hip out to the side a little bit. Gonna really get into these hips. Once you're there, you can pull it up just a little bit, start to feel it in the hip flexor. Should feel really good to you. Again, balance it out. Same thing, opposite side. Pulling that left knee up, opening to the side. Should feel really good. The one thing I'm gonna tell you, you wanna feel in this stretch, like you have your pelvis tucked a little bit. We don't wanna be doing this one back here. Probably not gonna feel much there. So standing up nice and straight, good position, keeping that hip open to the side, should feel really good for you. The next one that we've got here, Great, great stretch. This is gonna hit the piriformis. For golfers, very important muscle. I tell everybody, if you put your hand on the small of your back right here, and then put your hand onto the hip, the little muscle that we've got right in between is the piriformis. That's what we're trying to open. Golfers generally, and I say generally as in always, have one that's tight and one that's open. You're either gonna be restricted on your backswing or you're gonna be restricted into your follow through. To start to get into that, we've got two great ones. First one, again, using it as a balance stick. We can use it with one arm or with two. Whatever feels better to you, you don't have to be locked into one. You're gonna take the ankle, put it directly over the opposite knee. Again, we're gonna stick this butt out a little bit here. That's gonna help us get into this stretch a little bit deeper. What we're trying to do here is open the foot a little bit, not just flop it over. Feel that knee coming down, trying to get that 90 degree angle down here. As soon as you get to that spot, you're gonna feel it really good. You can move around a little bit, find what spot is right for you. I can tell you all the stretches in the world. I can tell you what muscles they're gonna hit. I can tell you how they're, how they're gonna help you. I can't tell you how they feel. That's something you have to find for yourself. So while you're doing this, really play with that. Go ahead and hit the other side. Get down, move around a little bit. Maybe it's, oh, maybe it's right here is where you get the best stretch. Maybe it's a little lower. Maybe it's up a little bit. You're really getting into that piriformis and those glutes. Start to play with that just a little bit. If you're a little bit more advanced and you wanna give a hair of a press here to open up, great. Whatever feels good as long as you're not hurting yourself. Next one I've got, <clears throat> nice and easy again. I'm gonna use the toolbox as a balance stick. Go ahead and you can put your hand right on your hip if it feels good. If you need a little balance, you can put it out to the side. Just gonna bring the knee up about 90 degrees. Start to work the foot right to left. You can put your hand right on your hip here and feel what it's doing to the hip bone. Total rotation in there, getting a lot out of this stretch. Does not have to be something where we're just turning into a windshield wiper on our car. Nice and easy is all we need here to open this hip up before we start to play. Again, balance it out, hit that opposite side. Nice, easy rotations. Just getting that foot moving right to left of the knee. We're trying to keep this knee fairly stable right here. Should feel really good. I've got one more. Once we get through this whole routine, that's when I would advise you to start using this as a weighted club. Choke down on it just a little bit. I guarantee you at 50 inches long, you grip this all the way at the end. The first swing is gonna be straight into the ground. So go ahead and grip it down almost to the metal. Start making nice, easy swings. Almost feeling it the same way that we did having the, the toolbox behind our back and behind our shoulders. Nice, slow swings. We're not doing this for speed. We're not seeing how hard and fast we can swing this. We're still opening up the body. Now, just to really get your attention, again, we're gonna balance it out. You're a righty, make a few swings left-handed. Really start to get into it. Me personally, again, I am fairly flexible. I have friends that say I'm extremely flexible. When I start swinging left-handed, I feel that in my right piriformis and my right hip immediately. That to me says, Time to do a little bit more stretching, time to do a little bit work, a little bit of work in there. So hopefully all these stretches are gonna help you out. I definitely recommend using the toolbox as often as you can. If you're gonna go practice, take the time to loosen up, make sure you're not gonna injure yourself while you're out there and keep having a lot of fun. Okay, my friends, so you're warmed up. You've, you've gone through the stretching routine with the golf yogi. Now you're ready to put the, the uh, golfer's toolbox to work. Okay, so I want to give you a quick run through 
here of the functionality. So you can see it easily fits in the bag, which is really nice. It's about three inches longer than your average driver. So when you travel, especially on the airplane, you want something longer than your driver to protect your clubs in travel. Now next you'll see on the cap here, there's a quarter inch machine screw, which is the universal size for all cameras and camcorders, okay? Simply thread it in there like so. Okay, now you got your camera stand. So if you want to video your swing at the range, you're just like this, you got your camera pointed to your hitting station and you're all set. Okay, so from there, take the camera off and here's your toolbox. On the end of the toolbox, you got a nice little cap and then inside you have two steel spikes and two fiberglass rods, which is gonna give you lots of different uses so you can replace all of these different products like into an all-in-one toolbox that's gonna help with all aspects of your game. Okay, so the most important thing in golf is fundamentals. Now, three of those, those fundamentals are alignment, ball position, and stance. Now, the golfer's toolbox is, is gonna help you with those. And so start off, take your cap off, and then you got your two steel spikes and your two fiberglass rods. So to set up your, like, like your setup station, take your one rod and align it to your target. So I'm going to that flag right there. That's perfect. Now take your second rod and fire it through the center hole. Now there's your ball position tee. So from there, you set your toolbox parallel to the outside fiberglass rod. There's your tee, and you're gonna put your ball just like so. Now we have our setup station. Okay, so we have our target line, number one. We have our feet line, number two. Ball position, number three. So when you're in this little setup right here is you want to have your like your club face so it's perpendicular to this rod. You want to you want to set your feet so they're the same distance away from the tube if you want to set up square. And you want to have the ball just off the end of this fiberglass rod. There's your ball position. So we have our target line, alignment of our feet, and our ball position. There's our complete you know, setup station. So when you're on the range practicing, now there's quite a few products there that will help you with this ball position and alignment. But what's great about the toolbox is take a divot, tap it back. Take a divot, tap it back. Take a divot, tap it back. This slides, which makes it real nice so you can get divot, 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 and you can see like how your consistency is. Now this also works for every club through the bag. You know, there, like here's a little chipping setup. You want to spread it out a little bit. You know, there's about a, like there's like your long iron. You want to spread it out a little bit more. There's your driver. Okay, so the fundamentals of golf. Alignment, ball position, target line, and, and stance. Use the increments for your stance. There's your wedge. There's your six iron. There's your driver. So this is the all-in-one setup station that you can set up to uh, work on and monitor your fundamentals. We've taken a couple of the alignment rods out of the golfer's toolbox to begin to give you a sense of how you can use the golfer's toolbox as an alignment and training aid. So what have we got here, Jim? Well, we've got two of the alignment training aids. Uh, one of the cool things, you can go right through the toolbox right here. Uh, and make a 90 degree angle, which is a, is a key to lining up. And then I just put one on the outside, which is a common place for a tour player to put a, an alignment rod. So uh, that you can stand behind your golf ball, see where you're going, and then go through a simple process for setting up. Uh, it's, we've got it right here on the ground, so it gets pretty simple. And that, and that would be coming in to set up to your golf ball with your feet very close together, putting your club behind the golf ball, and then almost no step with my driver, very small step, maybe to get it just inside my left heel right there, and then a big step with my right foot, which automatically puts my head behind the golf ball. So now I know I'm set up to hit a straight drive in, in this manner right there. Now, we've talked a lot of times about strategy from the tee, and I don't ever remember you saying anything to me other than you've got to pick a direction that your ball's going to curve into and that's the way you're gonna to start to become a consistent ball striker from the tee. 
So how do we set up for fade and draw using this configuration from the golfer's toolbox? You know, that's one thing that I really like about uh, having people go to a golf school or, or taking a lesson, and that is the ability to show them how to create, uh, correct what they're doing in their swing. So if you're coming to me and hooking the ball too much, then this is really easy to show people once I have them in this straight alignment setup to fade the ball, we've got to adjust things. So my, my cut swing, I lived with one of the greatest faders of all time, Bruce Litsky, so I saw this a lot. He would just move his body around, so now that I, it looks like it's off my, uh, the front of my left toe, but really it's, I'm lining up uh, this way with the club face more square to the, to the alignment rod, and my body's to the left. So as I take the club back, I'm going to actually take it slightly over the rod right there and then swing to the left. And I'll hit one out there for you, hitting a, hitting a cut. And that ball should go just like that where it can fade back to your target. But it looked like your normal swing to me. It looked yeah. like just a setup change yeah. and nothing else. Yeah, really, most shots are missed before you take the club away. And shots are done correctly by setting up differently. So to set up for that fade, uh, it's much different than setting up for a hook. So now to hook the ball, it'd be just the opposite. <laughs> Instead of my straight setup alignment, now I'm going to shift around this way. So from the camera view, it would look like the ball would be much further back. But really, I've just reoriented myself. Now when I take the club away, it's going much more to the inside, but, but pretty square to my toe line. And I'm going to try and swing down my toe line. And that's going to get that ball to hook. So if you come to me fading the ball or slicing, like a lot of people do, this is an easy way to get them to close their body up, give them a great chance to hit from the inside and to actually hit the hook or a draw down the fairway. Show me how to uh, use this configuration with an iron, if you would, please and some of the advantages of the golfer's toolbox in doing so? Well, one of the real problems with a alignment aid is you, you got to keep moving it every time. Okay, now why do I want to do that? Well, because if I take a divot, now I come back, I don't want to put the ball in this divot again, and that's the problem I see with many other training aids that align you. Well, all I have to do here is push the stick back. Now now I've got another few inches here to hit a few more balls exactly from the same setup. So I take my steps again, I put that ball right in the center of my stance. Beautiful. And that it was really a big part of this simple thing. You wouldn't think it's that big a deal, but, but the ability to keep moving this back, now I don't have to keep moving things all over the place. And you know, it's just a pain to do that, and it's so much more efficient when you can have that uh, feature. So really, we, we've done a few things here today. Very strong basic fundamentals. Setting up to the ball properly, squarely, with all of the angles pointing in the correct position. Then we talked about fading and drawing, again using the golfer's toolbox configuration and alignment rods. And then the beauty of hitting the iron, where you don't have to change your PlayStation, your hitting station, you simply slide one of the rods back. It's brilliant. Especially if you take one of these giant divots like I did right there. It's good you haven't then, asked me to then, hit a golf uh, ball. You know, then <laughs> it's real but it, bad. Yeah, that, really, that really does help you, and you can stay in the same spot. You can get your swing going, and uh, it's something you can do from week to week, month to month, year to year. Hello, I'm Peter Kessler alongside Jim McLean and the Golfer's Toolbox. You know, in the last 20 years, you and I have talked a lot about swing playing. Yeah. Yes, we in have. person, um, at your schools, on the Golf Channel, on radio. But here with the Golfer's Toolbox, we have the best way we've ever had to really visually demonstrate what swing plane is, what's important about it, and how to get on it. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right, Peter. We've done so many things on Ben Hogan over the years who used that idea of the swing plane with the pane of glass. Such a great visual, but so tough to set up. What I like about this is the ease of setting it up. And there's some very little detailed things that make it better. Like this thing off the ground is so great because I can just pop the balls in, in and out here underneath the uh, toolbox, no problem. So you can have a whole, a whole ton of golf balls right here and you can just keep popping them out here where you want to. So to show swing plane, 
I like to put the ball out in front of the toolbox right here and now I've got the two rods in at the same angle as the club that I'm hitting. Could be any club. I'm using a wedge right here, a 56 degree sand wedge. So with a 56 degree sand wedge, my club is not quite at a 45. It's a little more up and down, uh, more at about 60 degrees. Because the shorter the club, shorter the more the upright club, it'll be. Yeah, and I'm standing closer to it. Now there's a few things that happen right away as you start the golf club away. It, it almost feels like you're starting the club straight up. You can watch as you're looking at the toolbox right here that you're not jerking the club inside. But the club is going up and then to the inside and then getting parallel to the rods right up. So the club now is pointed up in the sky on an angle. It's not straight up and down. It's on, an, on that perfect angle. So as I hit the golf ball, when I come back to hit the golf ball, there's two sides to a swing plane. And the other side is here on the finish. So if you're just going to do some small swings, if I took the club away, I could practice doing this until I got a little feel so I could make my weight move in the direction of the golf club and see if I can get this club to swing back on plane. So many people try to lift the ball into the air. Wouldn't you say that's a... I've been guilty. <laughs> well, you know, doing all the shows, all the people you've watched, all the pro-ams you've played in, I think the number one thing that, that I see is a person going in the opposite direction of the swing and then trying to lift the club up into the air to get the ball in the air. So on this one, I'll bring it in a little bit closer. When I swing it back right to that area right there and right through. Now I've got my club swinging right on that plane. So I could hit as many balls as I wanted to from here until I got that feel into my swing. And I can see it. When I, after I hit the golf ball and go through, I want my club to come back up on this angle. And you that's, could, yeah. that's the area where recreational golfers don't seem to get to. I mean, I know I'm guilty of it, my friends are guilty of it, that when we get to impact, there's this sense of trying to drive the club further right. down the line. Right. You've got all of this separation, right. and you're never close to getting on plane. And give us a sense for the recreational player what you should feel using the golfer's toolbox and the alignment aids to get yourself on plane on both sides of the golf ball. Yeah, it's really important to understand there's two sides to the swing plane. So when that club goes up here, it's going to point up at the sky once, and it's going to point up at the sky twice, and it's going to be on a plane. So the idea of trying to drive the club straight down the line seems logical, but it's incorrect. Uh, tour players are not doing that. Top, top golfers don't do that. The, as you turn through, the club stays in front of your turn and then releases. Again, there's a wrist release here and a wrist release on the other side of the swing. And that puts you in this nice little position here at the end of the golf swing, which is exactly what I'm trying to get my students to do. Suppose I had 15 minutes, realistically, every other day with the golfer's toolbox. And this is one of the days I'm going to work on playing. How long do I give it? Do I give it five minutes? Do I just hit pitches? How do I know if, if, I, if I've had a successful session? Well, I think I, here's one of the things I think you could do is when, when you first get started with it, or e even when you're any time coming out to practice, is to do your practice swings until you get the feel right here that you've got it. And then you could just move back over here on this side. You've still got the picture. I love this picture from this side. And now as I swing that golf club back, I've got, I can really see it, but it's not really interfering, you know, where I feel like I'm going to hit something. But I can really see this and I could just hit, uh, you know, a whole gut bunch of golf balls right inside the toolbox. And then I can go right back here where it's a little more dramatic where I can really see what I'm doing here up and down the track or up and down the plane and then back up and up the plane on the other side with the little shift going through. So that's the way I would recommend using it. Yeah, so Jim and Peter just gave us a real nice explanation of the swing plane and how to work on and monitor it using the golfer's toolbox. Now right here we've got a bit of a different setup. We've got a couple rods on either side of my legs. Now what this is going to do is, you know, it's a couple things. You know, one, I can work on my swing plane. You know, I've matched these fiberglass rods up and the angle of the toolbox with my shaft, you know, put a plane here. You know, so when I take it back to the top, you know, I want these angles to match up. Okay, when I work on my, my uh, takeaway, if I'm, you know, three and a half inches away there, I want to be three and a half inches away there as opposed to 
picking it up that's outside the plane or pulling it inside. And what else these can do is this is going to give me some nice feedback for lateral motion in my swing. Some people like like uh, like to do like like a lot of weight transfer. Some you know some folks you know prefer to be stacked over the ball and and not move back and forth much. Whichever way you prefer to do it, you can use the toolbox and the tools inside it to work on and monitor that. So right here, I'm not swaying off the ball. And I know that because I've got this fiberglass rod right here. Now you can take this rod, here's just a, another way you can use the toolbox, is I'm gonna put this rod right here, right on my target line. So, you know, so my target line goes back and it goes through to my target. My ball's right on the target line, just like that. I've matched these angles up. Okay, now, now here we're gonna check the top of our backswing or like our loaded position. So it's back to the top. Now, if we're on plane, that shaft should point at our target line. Okay, so right here, that'd be steep and inside the plane. If I take it back like this, that's flat and outside the plane. I've got the golfer's toolbox out on the putting green, which is another great place to use this teaching aid. And what I've got here is a kind of a tough little left to right putt. And obviously we've set it up so that it's on the correct line when I do putt. But this is a difficult putt for a, a lot of people. And I want to explain to you a few things that we use the golfer's toolbox for. One on the top here, we have increments in inches and I can see how far back I take the putter for different length putts. So we got about a six foot putt here and I can start to be aware of how far I take it back and how far I take it through. Now there's varying ideas on how much to take it back and how much to take it through as far as ratios. Should it be one to one, one to two forward? So I've heard it all in my life in teaching but I've also had the opportunity to, to play with and also teach some of the, a couple of the greatest putters in the history of the game. Ben Crenshaw, played a ton with Ben. I've uh, worked with Ben some, mostly on his golf swing, not on his putting, but I certainly know what, he, what he's doing. Uh, Brad Faxon I worked with for 10 years, who was the best putter in that time frame in the 90s. And then Lenny Matisse, another great putter. Um, I'm, and I've also worked, uh, uh, since she was a little girl, with uh, Christy Kerr, who got to number one in the world. So I just want you to know, this is some of the stuff that they work on. And Lenny liked to work the same amount back and the same amount through. Faxon was longer back, shorter through. So then you have other people who are telling you uh, one increment back, two increments forward. But whatever you want to do, you can look right down here and do it, whatever your method is. The, my idea in putting is to have a repetitive method, to have something that you can repeat. So the toolbox here allows me to work on my stroke in numerous ways. So the one thing that I'd love for you to understand, we'll see this from the back camera, is the plane of the swing of the putter is measured by the shaft, not by the putter head. So what that means is as I take the putter back, it's going to work slightly up and to the inside, but the shaft is working right straight back and through on the toolbox because the putter has about 10 degrees of angle to it, less than all of your other clubs. All 14 clubs are different, 14 different clubs, 14 different lie angles. So when I've got it, this guy right on this shaft plane, I, I can see that as I go back, the putter works a hair to the inside, and as I go through on the other side, it'll work a hair back to the inside here. So it's a slight in-to-in -in stroke when you have an, uh, an angled putter. Now to counteract that if you wanted to you could get your putter more up this way then you'd have to pull the ball in. I'll move this out of here for just a moment but if I wanted to get in really close to it and get my putter more vertical like some people do then I have virtually a straight back straight through stroke right there so if you get a little further away from it say like a Crenshaw or Faxon they have more of an arc stroke follows outside their eyes a few inches so you've heard it all in, in putting but what you need to be is repetitive. And this toolbox is gonna to allow you to do that. So I'll get this ball in here in the right spot. Get set, 
and I'm going to try and just stay steady. But I might might even look at these inch increments right here and see if I went to the black area and finished in the black area, which would be an even stroke back and through. And that's kind of the stroke that um, Matisse and a lot of tour players use, kind of even back, even through. Some people like to go a little shorter back and then longer through. So that stroke would be maybe just short of the black here and then all the way maybe to the end of the black on this side or even to the, to the white area. But it's so easy to look at. I don't even have to look at the putter. I can look at the board and see that, wow, there I got it a little longer. So that might be a stroke you like. Whatever it is, you can set yourself up into a phenomenal practice station right here on the green. You can put right to left, left to right, whatever you have a problem with, and see that you're doing things the way that you want to putt. Um, my preference for putting would be watching you putt, seeing what kind of stroke works best for you, and then working on that all the time. And this is going to allow you to do that. So get yourself set up. You can work on your arc or plane of your swing really easy on, with the golfer's toolbox. And you can do it on pretty much any length putt. I'd prefer you'd stay probably inside of 12 feet. But you can do any right to left, left to right, straight in. And you'll be able to make a repetitive stroke. And you can practice it all the time. It's perfect. And just one more thing, you can use the toolbox indoors. You can bring it into your home. You use the alignment sticks right here to kind of balance it. And this is not in the ground here at all. You, this is lifted up, just you put it right down on, the, on your carpet and now you've got it uh, in your home. And you can go right on the rails, right back and right through, or you can go just a little bit off it. And now you've got your shaft just off the toolbox and from here you can just see watch your stroke and see if you make a good stroke that way so that's a, a great thing that you can do in your house you do not have to go to the putting green you know if I had to rate the things that the toolbox does I would really rate this chipping thing high one of my favorite things because I teach chipping a lot to the average golfer and the tendency is to have a really wicked bad chipping stroke so I see so many people that swing across the ball or they lift up. This is the greatest thing in the world for your chipping because it, it gives you a real simple chipping stroke. And a simple chipping stroke is going to be one that is very simple. There's not much to it. There's hardly any in and back in to a good chipping stroke. So I've worked with some of the greatest chipping teachers in the history of the game of golf spent a lot of time with a lot of top pros working on their chipping and what I'm looking for is simple. So again if we look from the back camera here we'll whip a ball up here somewhere in a decent lie. This chip is breaking quite a bit left to right so I set the pull left of the pin and when I'm going to work on my chipping stroke I want to have it pretty much just this way. The easier, simpler you can make it the happier I'm going to be. My weight's just a little bit left. I'm not going to do anything crazy. I'm not leaning the shaft way forward. Anything you might have seen before, just slightly forward. My weight's a little bit left. And then I'm just going to kind of follow the, the toolbox and, and chip it. So let's see that thing kind of work back in there. So it's just a phenomenal deal because if you swing and you smack the thing here going through, you haven't done too good. Or if you see that your club's up way up above the, the toolbox, you have not done good. So work on a nice simple stroke. Part of it's your setup, part of it is the teaching piece. Weight's a little left, knees are in, right toes in. Now you're set up good. Now your job is to make a simple little chipping stroke. And when you finish, you wanna be right there, not way up here above the toolbox. So there you have it, my friend, the golfer's toolbox. All in one, fits in the bag. It's going to help you all the way through your game. You want to get better? Put the toolbox in your bag, get to the course, stretch out, fundamentals, swing plane, video your swing. It's all here for you. It's the golfer's toolbox. Put this thing to use, okay? I'd like to thank Jim McLean, the voice of golf, Peter Kessler, the beautiful Red Ledges Golf Club here in Park City, Utah. And I'd like to remind you, 
GolfersToolbox.com. You can find us there. We have all kinds of information there, blog updates, you know, weekly tips. And don't forget about the handy little booklet that came with the, the uh, toolbox. Keep that in your bag so you can, you know, so you can reference it off like, like, like when you're out playing and out practicing. Golfers Toolbox, put it in the bag, build your game.